Right. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I actually, I came in so I can share some of my experience with uh, Careers in Code, like how I got involved in it and what I've done since. And um, I just wanted to start with um, like the state I was in when I started career. So before Careers in Code, I had gone through a really horrible experience with an employer. And so I actually was suffering major depression when I applied to um, Careers in Code. And it was hard because I like I just I wasn't functional. I wasn't able to, to get up and just do what I needed to do. Um, and I was working a part time job and actually experiencing PTSD. And so one of my coworkers had talked about CSC. She had applied and the application had just closed. And when I heard about it, the way she described it, I just knew that it was a chance for change and that it was something that I wanted to pursue. And so I actually started self-studying, um, like reading books and watching videos and taking notes and stuff, but it was really unstructured. And for the most part, I didn't really even, even understand what I was learning. Like I just knew, um, you know, people would outline it for you and you would kind of emulate what they're doing, but that doesn't mean you necessarily get what they're doing. So um, that was one of the things I really appreciated about CIC is that it brought that structure and formality to it and just made things make sense. Um, I actually went to the first uh, cohort's graduation because I wanted to see some insight into what folks had done. Um, was it something that was really realistic for me? And uh, you know how I could go from there, um, and that was good. I actually I met I think I met Max there. I met Jesse there. I met a couple people there. But I'm sure by the time see I uh, the second cohort ran around, they didn't remember me. Like I had reached out on email. Like I was trying to do things to like set myself apart, but. Um, Ultimately, it just came down to the application process. <laughs> and during that process, my computer crashed three times and I lost everything, all my hard work trying to get the stuff done. Um, I'm not sure what the application process is now, but at the time we had like certain things we had to get through and um, I was building documents and keeping directories and this kind of thing and just lost everything. Um, and I remember reaching out to Jesse and him saying, just try to get through the process, do what you can do and submit that. And it may not sound like much, and it might sound like something that people would normally just say, but it really did help me just to power through and say, okay, I'm gonna give this another, another chance. I'm gonna take the next 24 to 48 hours and try to get this done and get it submitted. Um, one of the things that he said was that it was no guarantee there would be a cohort three. He said, you know, you can wait and, and see if you, if you really feel like the timing is that horrible, you can do that. But I strongly encourage you to try for a cohort two. And so I did. Um, once we started, I remember thinking that I just was not going to finish. Um, like I said, I had major depression. I was having a hard time even just getting up. So me getting to a computer and all of that was a, like a huge uh, accomplishment. And um, they didn't know what I was going through because like, why, why would you share that with them? Like you just kind of want to show up and, and handle your business. And um, Ultimately, I, you know, I went from thinking I wasn't going to finish the cohort to there was no reason for me not to finish the cohort. The supports were just insane. I mean, I was meeting with folks every week. I would just be like, I need help on this or I need help on that. And then I started branching out where I was just looking into stuff on my own. I was just like, no, you can do this. You can figure this out. Um, and I ended up doing just so much better than I thought. And I really enjoyed it. And I think that's what got me through because I had um, just these horrible neighbors. They would know that it was my class time because, you know, we can hear each other. And all of a sudden, the building is shaking. They're blasting music. They're doing all this stuff to try to disturb me. And I have to now figure out how I can get through that. So, um, you know, it, it was tough, but I would just set high standards for myself. I would be like, nope, you're going to show up. You're going to have your camera on. You're going to be sitting upright. You're going to make sure, you know, like I just put a plan in place and uh, was able to make that happen. And like I said, I really enjoyed it. It got to the point where I'd wake up and I've had purpose for that day. So now I have energy for that day and I'm able to just get through the motions of what I need to. And um, it was just pretty amazing for me. Um, when things got harder, I would just lean in harder. 
Um, and I don't know if Max or anybody else remembers, but when I felt like I was not getting it, I would set a schedule in place and I'd be like, I'm going to meet with this person on this day and this day and this day. And I would just be like, nope, I need to get what I need to get from this. Um, after I graduated from CIC, the next Monday, I started two things. I started my second cohort, which was for Full Stack Python, and I started my job with Center State which um, technically was a tech job indirectly because it was for building up the tech ecosystem in the city of Syracuse. Um, and so that, that was interesting. The full stack Python cohort, it went like, I, again, I didn't think I'd do as well because it's a whole different language, but they'll tell you that when you learn one language, it helps you to learn another because you start to see patterns, you start to recognize things, you start to be able to even just troubleshoot better. Um, and so, and also I had such a good handle on CSS and HTML, I didn't have to worry about that. So they were teaching that as new stuff to the other folks in the cohort, but I already had that and I could just dig into the Python part of it and the Django part of it. And so that went, like I said, it went really well. Um, and I did well at the job, I think. I was actually supposed to continue with them for a select writing position, doing their self-studies, um, and things just kind of fell through. Um, but as that being part of my, my journey, I remember wondering if I was like messing up some opportunity for someone who came behind me. I remember asking that question, like would that cope, pop, um, create any problems for people who came after me because I was only on the job for a couple of months and I actually got the job through my mock interviews with CIC. So, um, you know, I interviewed with someone, she liked me so much, she sent my resume out immediately to a bunch of different places. And then I was just kind of on people's radar. Um, another thing about the mock interviews, and I don't know if you all have done them or going to start doing them or what have you, but I'm still in contact with some of the folks I interviewed with. They still, we meet regularly. They've helped me with my resume. I have a couple different versions of my resume. You're gonna meet some folks who say, you should change your resume for every job you apply to. That's in addition to your cover letter. So those are supports I got from CIC that I still have to this day. Um, actually, folks have been reaching out to me from the CIC um, part of my journey to even just offer jobs. I've had like in the last two weeks, I've had three job offers come in. Um, and thankfully, I'm able to focus on my apprenticeship. So, you know, I don't have to be stressed or, or anything or rush into anything. Um, but it's just nice to know that there are folks who are out there looking out for me um, and that, you know, I'm on fo folks' radar. Because even at this stage, sometimes I feel like I'm out here alone doing this because you're just at it all day, right? You have sessions all day, you have meetings, you have things you have to do, homework, all this kind of stuff. And you just kind of feel like you're in it on your own. But then you get a message out the blue from someone saying like, hey, you know, I, you know, I was thinking about you for X, Y, Z. Um, there are people who reach out just to connect and, and uh, you know, just reconnect and see how things are going. And that all feels really good. Um, and so at any rate, um, for my second cohort, which was with uh, JTC, it's called Justice Through Code. Uh, and that was a six month program also. My partner and I got to the point where <laughs> We had to advocate for ourselves to be able to even present at graduation. What happened is that we had, there were three people in our, in our team because they did group projects. And one of the team members, what they would do is they would get you to a certain point. It's like the three and a half to four month mark in the program. And then they basically just say, okay, we'll see you in two months when you have your capstone. And uh, they call it a wild WOW project. And so, uh, you know, you're on your own. Well, we had this one team member who just like abandoned us, like we didn't hear from him or anything. And so they basically tried to tell us that we couldn't present because um, he had submitted something and we submitted something and they were like, well, nobody can, like you can't submit. So we had to write a rebuttal um, and, and we ended up submitting, we, we submitted, we presented last and they didn't let anyone ask any questions on our projects, but our project was clearly one of the best ones that was in the um, presentation that evening. And I bring that up just to say that, um, you know, even in environments where they say that they're set up to help you and they're set up to support you and encourage you, you're going to run into situations where that's not necessarily the case. Like it boggled my mind that we went through a cohort for, you know, four months and then for them to say, okay, now you're on your own to do your project. 
where I had come from CIC and we actually had finals week. We had where you could just dig in and get all the help you needed to make sure you were good. Um, but I think it, it plays into just a different setup um, and the different motivations behind the cohorts. I don't have any ill will against them or anything. It's just that it's definitely a different approach from what you're gonna get at CIC. Um, and again, I really don't think I would be here if it wasn't for CIC because I got all the supports I needed and I went for it confident enough to continue to get what I needed when folks weren't giving it to me. So um, after that, I basically um, just completed that cohort while I was completing two or three other ones. I remember taking a cohort that was just on CSS and HTML. I took a cohort that was on intro to JS and intermediate JS. And um, I excelled in all of them. And, and basically what I learned from that experience was that they weren't necessarily needed. I didn't have to go through those cohorts, but I didn't know that at the time. I went through them because I thought they'd be a refresher and they ended up just kind of validating the foundation that I had um, you know, gotten and, and I was able to go from there. Um, I was going to classes from nine to midnight and then I would be up for another hour or two taking care of homework or just studying or whatever it was I need to get done for that day. Um, and then I was also attending various groups like our cohort actually had a peer group where we were meeting, um, I think it was every other week, mentoring sessions. I actually met with um, Max one to one, three times a week, and then because the funds were there. And then we dwindled down. We went from three days a week, I think, to two to one. And then it was like, every other week and now we're at um, every every three weeks, I think. Um, but that's because he's generous enough to say, I'll continue to mentor you. And uh, you know he, he has a lot of demands on his time, so I don't wanna take up too much of his time. But the point of that whole leg of my journey was that I never stopped, I never slowed down. And when things got hard, I really just said, you know what, try harder. You know, there was a time where I went through insomnia. If you ever have a sleeping problem, try cumin, C-U-M-I-N, or cardamom, or um, cinnamon. And you have to take them very specifically, just a pinch of this or a teaspoon of that, and it'll help you to rest. But I, I, it was hard. I mean, I, if you ever had insomnia, you know what I'm talking about. If you have not, I hope you never do, because it's just insane. Um, but at any rate, and I think that was because my schedule was all over the place. I have this one class that they're giving this cohort, but they're on a whole separate coast. So now I have to be up late night trying to, you know, get the content from them, but then I still have stuff all day long. So I think it just messed up my, my schedule. So I, I would encourage you all to just take the time to set a schedule that works for you and get your rest in. Um, and actually by the time this presentation is done, um, Max is gonna share with you a document I put together and it just has insight into different um, things that I do, tips, um, my thought process, just different stuff like that that have helped me get where I am. Um, and so hopefully that'll, that'll be helpful. So at any rate, I um, found out about this thing called Emergent Works and it was just for a mentor and I shouldn't say just, but it was for you to get a mentor. So I applied to it and basically I wanted a mentor who's gonna help me bridge between JavaScript and Python. And I thought that'd be a nice little polish off between all the stuff I had done up to that point. And um, I found out it was just another beginning. You know, I went through it, I did really well. My passion project, they called the capsule and the passion project came out tremendously well. But then I realized that um, it was only half done. I had done the front end, now I need to do the back end. So um, in the meantime of me joining them, I also joined Underdog Devs. And that was supposed to just be a community of, you know, coders who are willing to share their time and energy if I had any like miscellaneous questions. After I had been there, not even a week, they posted that they were um, accepting applications for their project Underdog. And so I reached out immediately. I remember it was like late at night and I'm like, oh, and I put together this list of all the stuff I was doing and, uh, and I sent it to them. And then the co-founder reached out to me and said, do you have a minute? And we got on Zoom and he outlined to me how based on what I was doing, they could see my grit. They could see my determination and they thought that I could be successful in their program. And that's how I got in. Um, and so, you know, it was just, it was a moment where once again, a complete stranger saw something in me and encouraged me to see it in myself. And I was really grateful for that. And so now I'm in my second cohort at Project Underdog. And again, they pay full living expenses so I can study code full time. I have a rigorous 
rigorous pair program program uh, pair programming plan in place. Um, also in a couple more cohorts, like I went back to EW. I did my database. Um, we were taught SQL in CIC, but I actually did it in GraphQL because I just wanted to, to try it. Um, and I use Strawberry to help with that. And so I want a mentor now where I can just, um, you know, just fine tune everything and, and polish it and just get to a higher state state with it. Um, and actually, I I got into Project Underdog with the help of, you're probably going to get tired of hearing his name, Max, because they had a list of algorithms and we didn't do algorithms. We did projects. We did, you know, all that nitty gritty project stuff. I can do a project in my sleep. Um, but as far as like straight coding an algorithm, I couldn't do that. And we spent over a week doing that. Um, and it got me in a place where I was able to interview, interview successfully, pass the technical interview part of it. And now, and I told Max this, like, it took us a week to get through that. And now I can do all that full set in 20 to 30 minutes. That's if I'm going to take the time to do pseudocode and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, like, like I said, I hold myself to a higher standard because I don't want to then turn around and disappoint him. He put a lot of effort into helping me get to that point so I could do that. So, you know, and then the other thing is, it's for me. When we went through that experience at JTC where they tried to not have us present and all this other stuff, I could care less about a certificate. I got the knowledge. That's what I came for, you know? So either treat me right or whatever, but you can't take the knowledge away from me. So that was that experience. Um, all in total, I went through probably five or six cohorts after CIC. That's if you include the refresher stuff. Um, and I am actually in, um, I'm in, is it two or three now? But the new one is the creative expression. There is a cohort that is put on by Emergent Works where you write um, almost like as a therapeutic um, element to your journey. Um, and so they still, it's still centered around coding, but they teach you how to be like an audio engineer or a program manager or whatever you want. But it's the creative expression part of it where you can kind of process a lot of the stuff that you've gone through. Um, so I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. Um, I continue to mentor. I can continue to daily rigorously pair program. I've completed a number of Udacity courses. Um, I reread Eloquent JavaScript. I'm completing a Udemy course that I highly recommend. It's called JS, the weird parts. Um, I'm also going through the Odin project. Um, I have some select Udacity courses on the back burner I would like to do. Um, and like I said, I'm still working on my passion project so I can um, do the back end. The, the database and stuff is all built. I really just have to populate the content. And then I want to pull in my graphic design background to do animations for the videos. So I'll be working on that for them. Um, I also have a new React project. It's called Epic APIs. And it's centered all around API works, event listeners. Um, I pulled in some of my graphic stuff. Because anything I do, I like to have a visual component so people can see that I have a diverse skill set. So I try to do that. Um, I've contributed to open source projects. I'm helping to um, rebuild the, uh, not rebuild, but to build a new website for underdog devs. Um, and like I said, I've just stayed in contact with a, a slew of people that I've met along the way. Um, so now I'm just working hard to just get to my end game. Like I just really feel like I'm in a great position. Um, one of the people, when they reached out to me about the job, I, I requested a meeting with the, the co-founder, with the hard co-founder, because I wanted someone who was going to like give me a true assessment of where I was. And I basically said I wanted to talk about employability. And I met with her and she basically said that um, she said that she really thinks I can uh, successfully uh, get through any any technical interview, any interview at any top companies, like that's that's where my skill level is now. And that's not anything I ever dreamed of. Never ever did I think I would be in a place where, where folks are saying that to me, but I can feel it. I can feel my growth. When I'm meeting with my mentors, like I'm outlining what my edge cases are. I'm suggesting refactors on my code. Um, and then also just to revisit code I've done before, I can see how now I'm much more efficient. When I did it before, it was a newbie way. I had like maybe 10 or 12 lines of code and now I'm doing it again and it's still clean code and it's down to four or five lines of code. 
So all of that is validating to me, like my efforts are worthwhile. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm getting where I'm going. And all I have to do is stay the course. Um, I have a small business that will have a component of um, internet uh, cold web dev in it. And I also have done client sites. So some of the stuff that's come out of me doing it's like, you know, people reaching out to me about job opportunities, um, you know, the different cohorts and stuff, but I was also tapped to do a client site. If you ever go to SB, SP, SJP, uh, dc.org is the uh, school justice project I did their website and you'll see at the bottom of it is a, a shout out to me that I did it and that was a paid website like they they paid me and I remember I read every line of the contract to see what I was supposed to be paid and then I requested a, a meeting with the founder and I was ready to like advocate for myself and I need to be paid and this that the other and he just outlined everything exactly how I needed to hear it this is how much you pay. This is what's in the contract. We can pay you every week, you know? And when I was done, they actually paid me more. They said, and I thought it was a mistake. So at first I was like, oh, just wait 24 hours before you say anything, right? Cause you don't want to owe people. So I said, well, um, I'll just wait. We were constantly in contact about something else. And he said to me, oh, and by the way, I paid you extra as a thank you. So that, that was legit money that they wanted me to get. And it was like, wow, like I can make money. I can make money doing client sites. I can make money doing sites from scratch. I can make money doing workshops. I can make money doing um, consultations, right? Like that's all the stuff you're getting from CIC because they're giving you a foundation from which you can then pick your path. I actually asked Max, I said, will anyone be disappointed if I don't become a full stack JavaScript developer? And he said, absolutely not. You're already a success. You don't have to worry about that. Pick your path. We give you all of this so you can then figure out what's for you. So for some people, that is everything. There are some people it comes really natural. They, they do it, they love it, it's great. And for other people, it just takes more effort. I'm one of those people, it takes more effort. And so I have to just dig in and do what I need to till I get to that comfort level. Now the issue becomes, you know, you know, now you're at that level and you just need to recognize that and be confident about it. And so that's kind of where I'm still, I'm still working on that. But, you know, it just feels really good to know like I'm employable. You know, I have great skills. I can marry my current skills with my previous skills and I could be successful. Um, what I attribute to my success is just a bunch of things, just the support, the encouraging, uh, encouragement, not stopping, um, honing in on just various aspects of my focus because I'm still focused on full stack JavaScript with a specialization in Python and design. And that's what I focus on. You know, I have people like, uh, they come to me and they're like, oh, like I want to build this Flask project. And blah, blah, blah. I don't do Flask. I don't do flats. I'm not interested in flats. I need to focus. I can do flats later. But, um, you know, it's just, it's uh, staying in focus, staying in, staying in scope is uh, really a big part of it for me. Um, sanity checks, where, how am I doing? Like, how's the day going? Uh, do I need to change anything? Sometimes I'm stressed and I don't know it. I remember meeting with a mentor and I, for the life of me, could not get my code to run. And it turns out, and of course it was with Max, he put it in the browser and he like he was like, he popped it in and he said, oh, there you go. Okay, I'll see you next time. Cause I have this habit of making a list. I'll say, this is what I need to get through in this meeting. And this is all like, if we could just get through this, I'll be good. And uh, he was basically like, yeah, all you need to do is like put it in the browser and run it. But I was so like, I have been so conditioned into the react at the time that I just didn't remember it. And I was stressed. If I wasn't so stressed, I would have been able to pick that up and, and just handle it on my own. So like, it's funny now, but at the time it wasn't because I was, like I said, I was stressed. Um, Jesse, Jesse telling me to just submit what you can, try what you can. And then Jesse, I asked him for a recommendation. I had no references. And so I had applied to this thing and I asked him for a reference. And then you know how you walk away and you second guess it and you're like, oh, I don't really know if if that was appropriate. So I'm going back to my computer to tell him, never mind. He had already wrote it. He had already sent it to the lady. He had, I mean, he had already, and I said that this is, that's what you want. Those are the kind of supports you want. People who are going to help you, help you not self-sabotage yourself and help you just kind of get forward. Um, like it was just insane to me that he would just have it done so, so quickly. Um, and, um, just my peers too. Like I actually, I, I moved to a new place. I've just had a lot of stuff I've been managing with that, but 
peers from cohort two helped me get it. I was able to use one as a reference in addition to, to other stuff. You know, so it's it's all of that, but it's also having a continuous uh, learner mindset, just wanting to grow and wanting to get to a place where, you know, you just just have a better grasp of yourself, but also yourself in this condition, right? Because I'm still in a state. I'm still getting where I'm going. Um, that and stressing the code, like I love to take a problem someone gives me, tweak it and flip it and, and do all this stuff to see what it can do or can't do. And, um, you know, what, well, what about these other edge cases? Like I like to do a lot of that. And then also just acknowledging my limitations, you know, um, what, what I'm capable of, what I'm not, if I'm at capacity, like how's this week going to go? Um, all that stuff. And even in my quiet way, because I really am quiet and shy, I always distinguish myself. I do stuff like if it's the way I write my messages to request, um, you know, meetings with people or or whatever. I just always find a way to distinguish myself. And, and thankfully, that's been helpful and, um, you know, well received by people. Um, and then, you know, I don't I just don't take things personal. That whole JTC thing could have been much worse if I had taken it personal. But me and my partner got together and just made a very logical um, argument for why what they were trying to do to us was not right. And we were able to um, get through that and successfully present. And our site is still on the website if you ever want to go and, and tinkle around in there. And then I just always say thank you often. I always apologize when it's needed. And really, I just try to visualize where am I going? Because when I started that program at CIC and I was in major depression and I couldn't even get up to get to the computer, I did not see a future for myself that was going to happen that next day. But now I'm able to see a future for myself in the next year, the next six months, the next five years. Like I can clearly see myself headed somewhere. So, um, you know, that's just some insight into, you know, my, my journey from before CIC up to this day and time. And I still consider myself a, um, a student, but I keep uh, being in situations where I can see people coasting me and guiding me into the leadership role. And I'm thankful for that because it helps me to grow. Um, I haven't been looking at chat. So if I missed any. I was going to say there are a couple questions in there, but um, before you dive into those, um, do you want to screen share the um, slides? I just added them, uh, the PDF to yeah. the daily outline, but if you want to just do a quick run through of those, just so the students know um, sure. what's in them and, and uh, what they can link to. And that is in today's outline that's uh, posted up to Canvas and also uh, in the schedule. Can you all see my screen? You're good. Yep. Yes. yes. Thank you. So this is, it's really, it's just really simple. I, I kept it tight. So this is a question I always ask. It is better to ask and be told no than it is to never ask and never know. That's how I take risks. That's how I take planned risks. Because if I don't take a chance and just say to you, can you do this? Or will you do this? Or is this an option? I'm missing opportunities. So that's kind of been my mantra. And it, like, if you had to boil this down into one word, it would just be try. That's all it would be, it's just try. This is something I put together about knowing. And knowing is a funny thing. Like lots of times we'll think we know something and we really don't. Like later on we'll realize like, oh yeah, like I really didn't get that. I thought I did, but I didn't have it the way I thought I had it. So I talk about um, knowing and the different, the different ways that we can be misknowing stuff. <laughs> um, and then over here, I talk about redoing projects because um, I'm a fan of, if somebody gives me code, redoing that code redoing it without them, starting with a blank page, seeing if I can get through it. If I need to check my notes, that's fine. But I, like, I want to, like I said, stress the code. And in that, I want to also like stress myself as far as like my focus. There's two mental states that we operate in. There's focus mode and there's diffuse mode. And there's this excellent course by Coursera that I would recommend. And it's called um, Learning How to Learn. And they talk about that, how you will dig into something, focus in on it. And then if you can't get it, walk away. Right. We do that all the time when people say, oh, walk away. Oh, sleep on it. That's what they're saying. Let your diffuse mode kick in so that you can make way for a solution to come through so you can see it. So um, like I just kind of talk about redoing projects and how you should do that. 
Um, it shouldn't just be going in and copying all the code and okay, does it run? You want the actual mechanics of having typed that code because you want to build up your muscle memory. You want to increase your exposure and you just really want to train your body and your mind for coding. And then down here, I just have other coding tips that are like more intuitive, right? Like you want to enjoy what you're doing because if you don't, then you can have an adverse reaction to it when it comes time to do it. So you kind of just want to tell yourself, I love this. I love this. I love this. Right. Like you just want to, I don't know, just train yourself to, to see it in a positive way. On here, these are things I do. I do all of this. It's 44 plus acts of distinction. Um, I have a certain way that I email people, a certain way that I send the messages. I will always have a beginning, middle and end. I will always greet them. I will always say something like, hoping the week is treating you well. You know, like I, I always have something in there. Then I get to the point and then I have some kind of wrap out. Thank you, um, talk to you soon, whatever. Um, but if you go through this whole, this whole list and you can see they're like in chunks. That's why it says 44 plus, because I was like, oh, this is wonky, it's all over the place. But if you, um, if you go through it, you'll see different stuff. And some of it's probably a lot of the stuff that you do, um, but hopefully there's some helpful tips in there. And then here is, um, this is something I would recommend you do for yourself. I thought of this as I was putting it together because I was like, you know, when I asked Max that question, I fully thought he was going to say something like, you know, we really want you to be in the tech area, right? Do, do something techie. But he said, you know, no, like if this, if this isn't for you, it's not for you. If it's for you, but it's only for you in a certain lane or a certain amount, then that's what it is. Um, and so what I did was I took different things that I could do to support myself. And I just kind of, and then I, I started breaking it down like this for my small business, all of this would fall under that. And then this would be all of this stuff. This whole section, this is like my ideal job right here, this whole section. But this is all stuff I could do. You know, I am a poet. I, I do spoken word. I could do wireframes only for someone. Um, you know, I had, when I started this, I made a list and it was like a list of over a hundred things. And so I had to like condense it, condense it down. But, um, you know, I just thought like, how interesting is it that when we go through this journey, we, we tend to forget some of the skills we have. And we think like it's only code and it's only web development. When you come with this whole package of skills and they can play interplay with this journey, perfectly well there's no reason why you have to pick one or the other but I thought it was a nice visual for me to break down um you know different routes I could take and um you know just just go for them whether it's something that's apparently techy or not um you know just just that there are options so that's the document that um Max has shared and then did you was there something else you wanted me to do Max no, I was just going to open it up if you want to go through um, uh, chat. I know uh, there were a couple questions. I think your your cohorts after the program were six months. Was that was that correct? Yes, JTC was six months. The um, HTML CSS one I think was like two months. The um, JavaScript one was four to five months. Um, the EW program is six months. Um, and I can't think of the other ones, but they, they all range either from about two to three months up to six months. None of them were longer than six months. Um, what did you say the mentor program was? Which one? The mentor program, that would be EW, so that's uh, Emergent Works is their name. They used to be Code something, um, but now they're Emergent Works, um, and they're, they're a great group of folks over there. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it um, for that. So I don't know if anyone has any other questions. If not, I do, uh, Santonia. I mean, not Santonia. That's my brother, sister, Latonia. I'm sorry. Her name is Santonia. <clears throat> Santonia. And one of my cohorts, there's a Sin Santonia. I've never met anybody whose name was even remotely close to mine, and now it's like an abundance. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I love your energy and uh, you're awesome. Um, oh, thanks. Did rereading, re how did rereading eloquent JavaScript help you? Well, as you know, if you've looked at that book, 
Um, when I first read it, I had no clue what they were talking about. I was running to the solution section because I was like, this makes no sense whatever. And I couldn't understand, why are you talking about crows? Like, I just didn't get it. I just didn't get the book. But now after having gone through CIC and, and all this other stuff, now I have clarity around the language. And now you can use a metaphor or analogy. You can use something that I can now consume because I have a better understanding what code is fundamentally. Um, I don't think that's a good book for new, new folks. Um, it's just it's just too out there. Uh, but once you have some experience under your belt, then it's like, oh, OK, now now I can get it. And so when I reread it, I didn't I didn't have to check the solutions because I was able to figure stuff out. But initially, it just it just wasn't a good read. Thank Does you. that answer your question? You're welcome. Yep. I had a couple questions. Um, I just also I want to echo what Larry said. You're a great speaker and uh, all your topics. Very interesting. Um, so one question I had was about how you saying you you keep contact with a lot of people that you've met along the way. And you mentioned that um, I was curious, how did you go from mock interviews to staying in touch with the people doing the mock interviews? Yeah, it was just a very natural progression. We, we were in the mock interview the person. The one person said she started digging. So she had to be curious enough to know more about me. So she started digging and saying like, well, what other experience do you have? Well, well what else have you done? And, um, and so she said, well, you know, I'm looking at your resume and I'm not seeing, because a lot of times like you'll go and people will say, okay, your resume needs to be all tech, right? And so I'm trying to conform to that. And she's saying, but you have all of these other skills that play in very nicely. So it really stemmed from her being curious enough to ask. But usually it's like, I don't know, people just have like a vibe, right? It's like, oh, you know what, Doug seems pretty cool. And then you get like a DM or something and now you're having coffee or tea, right? It's, it's like that kind of thing. It's just, um, it just kind of happens naturally. Um, I don't think, I yeah, I didn't have to like reach out to anyone independently. They all happen in the mock interview. Um, and then like, we would just set a schedule. Like, okay, well, let's just check in once a month. Or let's check in every two weeks. Or I would set a goal for myself because I, if I meet with people, I don't like to show up not having done anything between the last time we met. So mm -hmm. we would set a plan for me and I would say, okay, I'm going to get X, Y, Z done. And then I'll reach out to you to set up another date. So it would be like that. Um, and then, like I said, the one person, she, I don't know what it was about me necessarily, but whatever it was, she liked me enough that she just sent my resume out to all of these departments. So it was people I had never even met who I was on their rad radar. Um, and, you know, people are just saying, hey, let's meet at Salt, you know, City for, you know, a drink or, you know, whatever. Um, and so, you know, like you want to be sociable. Like I said, I'm quiet. I, I, I am quiet. I am shy. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, like we're all people, we all like to be liked, right? So, so you kind of want to be in a company of people who who look forward to seeing you. Um, sure. And so, yeah, I, I just took a, a chance and and just kind of um, you know followed up and was able to do that. And I would say, you know, don't feel like you can't reach out to people. You know, if you meet with someone and you're like, oh, like I I really I get a, a sense of something, you can. And if you're not sure reach out to Max and Justin and ask them, I've done that where I'm like, hey, like, I don't know if this is appropriate. And, you know, and they'll let you know, you know, the like the read of the room or whatever, and you can go from there. Um, but I always say take planned risks. The fact that you met them in a mock interview, now you have a doorway. Even if you didn't get the job, even if the mock interview, well, hopefully the mock interview didn't go bad, but even if it did, you can use that as a way to say, okay, well, it didn't go how I wanted it to. How could it have gone? And now you all can have a discussion and that could lead to going to coffee or, or, or whatever. Um, so I would say, you know, use those as opportunities to, to be able to do that. And even though I'm quiet and shy, I'm telling you, when it comes to me getting knowledge, I do not play. I don't. I will make a plan. I will put it in place. I will stick to it and get things done. Um, and I always tell myself, like, this is only six months of my life, right? It's intense, it's hard. There were times when I cried, but it was like, this is only six months of my, that's because I didn't think I was gonna go to this other cohort. Now that's another two months of my life, right? But that's how I was able to digest it because it's like taking in pieces, right? 
like take it how you can take it so does that answer your question that, that does that does actually gives me a lot of a lot of uh insight about how to try to uh keep up connections when like you feel like there's something there um specifically with the mock interviews just out of curiosity so was it by the end of the interview you you were saying let we're going to speak again or did you follow up afterwards no well i did follow up it was by the end of the interview where um the one or two said you know let's let's keep in touch but i always followed up because um one it's just something that i do but also that's something that i think laura taught us like after you have an interview, whatever, send them an, a message. You, I know you don't want to, but send them something just saying hi and, and, and talk about something that happened in the interview. And so I did that. If you're ever interested, let me know. I can send you a couple samples of stuff I sent to people. But I sent okay. everybody a follow-up email saying, hey, thanks for the interview. And and I said something about whatever, whatever we talked about in the interview. So yeah, it, um, it was both, basically. Thank you. That that uh that answers my question very well. I have one other question. I was looking at your, your skill set. What is a human condition hawker? <laughs> so we, you know, some folks go through life and they're always challenged, right? We don't have money. We don't have food. We don't have shelter. We don't have, there's so much stuff that you have to deal with. And that's a part of the human condition. I'm the person who will be bombastic about the fact that we're going through that it's not right. What are you going to do to help it change? You know, because we know it's like when you get a job because you know somebody, right? But here I am, I'm more qualified than you, but you got the job because you know somebody. I'm not necessarily hating on you. I'm just saying I'm more qualified and you got the job because you knew somebody. It's a very basic example of how we go through life and there's different things that impact our condition that we may or may not know about. And yet still somebody has to advocate for change. We have to say, it's not entirely right that you're doing that. Something right. that value right. me. Yeah, so that's what it is. It's like, I, I wanna advocate for me, I wanna advocate for you, right? Um, like, I don't wanna be political, but it's like, I always feel like as a black person, I don't have a right to hate somebody because they're Spanish or they're gay or they're, why? when the world is dumping on us it's dumping on all of us it might they might be just focusing on that group right now but it's going to come back to all of us so i feel like we should be fighting this together why why would we be at odds that makes no sense to me so that's just my own personal take on it so that's what it is it's me saying there are issues and they need to be addressed i like that thank you thank you all right i feel like i took up a lot of time we want to get to this activity max yeah if we could uh, we okay. should shoot for being done at 6.30. Okay. All right. It shouldn't take that long. All right. So let me share my screen again. All right. So I have an activity that I'm going to outline to you all in a second. We have two prizes. Only one person can win. We have, you can't see it. That's why I signed a screen. The Constitution, because I'm all about rights and voice and identity and all that kind of stuff so you can pick as the winner that you want a copy of the constitution it's still in the plastic it's brand new or you can pick that you want this keyboard which ugh, is brand new also so this is the challenge the challenge is i have a question for you all it is what have you learned about yourself from your time at CIC and how is that going to guide you as you go forward? That's basically the question. So if you're interested in answering that question, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add your name and you can put your name in the chat. We're gonna add your name into this randomizer thing I found online. Then we're going to go down here. We're gonna click start. It's gonna pick one of you randomly because I want this to be fair. And then that person will share their response. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because one, you're all a cohort. So if you feel like this is an interesting question and we should all get together on our own and then you can talk more about it. What, what did I get from, did I get anything? Was it worth my time or whatever, whatever your um, your thought on it is. So and, I actually want everyone to answer this question. If oh. you are interested in reading your response aloud and sharing it with the class, that's when you should throw your name in the chat. That's what's oh. gonna make you eligible for the prize. But 
out over in Canvas, there was a homework assignment for this. I want everyone to spend like the next five to 10 minutes just thinking about their answer um, and then can submit that. And it's whatever, whatever you would like. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. It doesn't have to be edited. You don't have to be grammatically correct. But if you are willing to share your answer with the class, throw your name in the Zoom chat. And uh, once you share, you will be eligible for one of Latonia's prizes if you get picked. Is that all right, you... Latonia? Oh, yeah, that's fine. I was worried. I was like, I don't like pressuring people, Max, but since they don't have to answer out loud, that's fine. Yes, yeah. And I will let me drop the link to Canvas, the assignment in the chat too. So again, to be eligible for the prize, if you're read, if you're willing to read your response out loud or just share it, uh, throw your name in the Zoom chat once you're done uh, typing up your or just throw your name in the Zoom chat. We'll give everyone like five minutes, ten minutes to answer this, and then uh, we will pick the name and have you read aloud. And I just put the assignment in the Zoom chat. And Latonia, I'll be sure to share them with you uh, afterwards. Okay. Let's say shoot, have your answers done by 625.
Okay, so if you're willing to share your response with the class, um, even if you don't have it fully typed out in Canvas yet, now is your last chance to shoot your name in the Zoom chat. Uh, that is what will make you eligible for Latonia's prizes. Uh, while I have nothing against the Constitution, I have used that exact keyboard for years, and I loved that keyboard. Um, so if you are willing to share your response with the class, uh, drop your name in the Zoom chat. We'll give you 30 seconds more to do that, and then Latonia will pick a random name for you to share, and uh, we will wrap up Latonia's presentation. Matt, what's the um, what's the best thing about this this keyboard? That's how I learned about it. Asking you about your flow. Remember that you shared your flow with us. I am all about an ergonomic keyboard. Um, I type on a. Oh, let's grab it. I don't know if the oh. virtual background is going to work or not, but I actually type on a keyboard that is literally two separate split halves. Oh, and now okay. I'm completely gone. So you can see mine is completely split. The ergonomic keyboard that uh, Latonia is, is offering as a prize um, is uh, not, it's still one piece, but it's split down the center. And because of that, it allows you to have your hands um, kind of directly in front of you instead of curving your elbows in, uh, which is better for, for ergonomics. So normally when you're typing, um, it's just a, a very tough spot to sit in. It's not great for the body long term. And so by moving the keyboard and splitting it in half, it takes a little while to get used to typing on it because there may be some keys that you're used to hitting with your right hand that are all on the left side of the keyboard or vice versa. But um, it is a great keyboard and it is normally ergonomic stuff is outrageously expensive and Microsoft found a way to actually make an ergonomic keyboard slightly more affordable. So I am all about using an external keyboard. Um, I rarely use the, la the keyboard on my laptop. I really only use that when I'm traveling um, and I almost always use an external keyboard for just better ergonomics. Um, so if you're willing to read your response out loud, Last chance to throw your name in the chat uh, and make yourself eligible for one of the prizes. So give two more minutes to throw your name in the Zoom chat as long as you're okay reading your response out loud. Going one. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Latonia, have you read the Constitution front to back? Not this book. This is the Constitution and Selected Writings by the Founding Fathers. So I have not read this book back to front, but I have read the Constitution. Good question. I, yeah, I don't remember all of it, but I do. Because it's like, you know how you hear jargon? Like it feels, sometimes it feels like a whole other language. I wish there was like a, not a spark notes for the Constitution, but like, uh, and I'm sure people have published them, but like the I, it's, I'm thinking of like the Shakespeare Brand for new. idiots. Oh, okay. yeah. You know, when, when there's like, yeah, he used this <laughs> language. Too long, but, too long, didn't read it. Actually it. Means. All that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, it uh, doesn't look like there's anyone else. So go ahead and select the prize winner. Okay. Pushing the button. Christy. Christy, can you share your response to the question for us? Wait a minute, I'm trying to. You're good. So um, my response was, I learned that I can learn something as challenging as front end, back end and full stack from scratch. Um, I had no background in any of this. So everything that I learned was new to me. Uh, what I already knew was how to research and advocate for myself and to manifest the things that I want in my life, into my life. So that's it. That's, all that's great. No, that's wonderful. And which item did you want? The constitution or the keyboard? Keyboard. You said keyboard? Yes. 
Oh, okay, we'll get that to you. Now, if anybody else, is there anybody who wants to go again for the Constitution? Because Corey popped his name in, and I feel really bad that he wasn't in the in the drawing. So we can we can run this again. Okay, so let's. You're gonna get the Constitution though. Is that okay, folks? Okay, so let's do this again. It looks. Oh uh, yeah. It should take her out, but I'll just I'll just do it. Let me just say this. I'm open to a trade. If you have something else and um, you're willing to trade, I, I'm willing to negotiate and discuss it. <laughs> you talking to? It's fine in the class. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So we have Corey. All right. We're good. All right. Here we go, folks. Last run. And Corey, that is that's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you said I just got to share uh, something from the assignment, right? That we just submitted. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, wait, we're reading the whole thing or just one thing? And what you wrote? You if you don't want to read the whole thing, because some of them might be okay. private, that's fine. Yeah, but... I'll read it. That's cool. That's cool. I got you. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, with the uh, the cohort, uh, I've learned honestly just a lot of lows and downs, like uh. I've learned like how I react to, uh, you know, when I struggle with certain concepts and topics and stuff. Uh, I learned that when I put my head down to focus, I can't get a lot done. Uh, I do have a lot of learning to do still, but uh, I do believe that like the struggle and grit of this course, because it was like 24 weeks, uh, it will pay off in the long run, you know, with whatever path I do uh, going to. Nice, that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you both. I'm going to, uh, so Max, I'm going to get these to you and I'm going to have extra copies of the constitution for Larry, Nicole, and Tiffany. Cause I, I hate people not getting something when they put themselves out there. So they're going to all get a constitution also. Yes, I do have a pile of them because I think people should have it. And I'm going to mute myself and go off, but I did want to see the um, presentation. So it's okay if I just lurk in the background. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Latonia. And Latonia, Thank the you. last, uh, I'm not sure if you're available, but the last week of class, we work on capstones in person and it's all the TAs and instructors and mentors, they all kind of come together. Um, so if you want to hold the prizes and if you're available oh, that okay. week, you could just uh, give it to the, the students in person. Oh, absolutely. Um, but that's, that's up to you, just making it easier on logistics. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, with Latonia's inspiring story and a great example of where students can go after cohort two, uh, or where Latonia went after cohort two, where you guys uh, have the opportunities to go, I'd like to switch it over to our capstone check-in. So again, we are going to try and make these like as lightning quick as possible. So try and limit yourself to like two or three minutes here. We will probably do some uh, before the seven o'clock break, take a break and then go to um, the, the rest of the students, but really try and uh, limit yourself to two or to three minutes here. Definitely welcome to share your screen, but remember three questions you need to answer. What did I do since the last capstone check-in two weeks ago? It's important to, to acknowledge what you've gotten done and the progress you've made. What are you working on in the next two week period? What, you know, is on your, your roadmap? Do you need help generating what the next steps are? And then finally, where are you stuck? Where do you need additional resources? Where do you feel that you're struggling? Where do you feel that you could benefit from one-on-one -on -one time? Even if that's finding a mentor for that one-on-one -on -one help, or even if that's struggling with keeping everything in your head or whatever it is. So those are the three questions that you should answer. And again, try and keep it to two to three minutes today so we can lightning round through everyone. With that said, would anyone like to kick us off? Larry, go for it. All right. So I didn't get a lot done, but um, one of the things I did, I can share my screen too. Sure, go uh, for it. Let's see. All right, one of the things I did was um, kind of reverse engineer some of the API. So I just did like clicked on a bunch of different stuff and saw, saw what the API call was. And then I learned how to um, make that request 
via postman before when me and max uh, went through it we had to use like cookies but now i learned just copy the request as a curl command put it in import it in the postman and then let it run and it will give me the information i need uh, one thing that i was stuck on was all the data it, it's it was very overwhelming and trying to connect it together but i spoke yesterday with max during office hours and then he gave me some good advice on how to get that together. So the next two weeks, what I wanna do is work on um, making my models, getting that data into the database. And also I took the time to go back and actually learn um, via the documentation, what I was doing when it was, um, you know, doing the, uh, the DBJS thing. So now I understand the process of, uh, you know, the DBJS uh, file of getting SQLized connected. Um, so, that's my goal is to get the data in the database and then um actually start being able to pull it into like um my uh into my capstone any roadblocks the roadblocks was being lost in the data and how to formulate it so now um and then time too i've you know i've been pressed for time but um i had to get down because we the time is running out so awesome Thank you. No problem. Nicole, I know you wanted to go first. I'll let you go second. Nicole, did you want to um, still go? Can somebody okay. go really quick? I just have. Okay, no problem. Who would like to go else? Scotty, yeah, go for it. Okay. Hey guys. So I feel like Larry, I didn't get a whole lot done, but I'll show you guys what I got. Um, and thank you again, Max, for being helpful yesterday. And, um, oh, yep. Okay. So I was, can y'all see my screen? Um, not yet. No. Okay. Sorry. I started. Maybe if I press the button, we'll be all right. <laughs> okay. So I was able, the last time I didn't have my picture showing up um, for this portion. Um, so I was able to grab my picture and put my picture in there. I have been able to get all my buttons working to move over to each page. Um, not gonna lie, it was, Max was helpful because I was really like lost. What I am in the process of doing now is kind of, I think I'm going to reconstruct my page. I think now that I have it actually moving, my creativity juices is flowing. Um, I was able to go on YouTube and figure out that I can add like a stock video into my portfolio. I mean, my um capstone. So I'm currently looking for different stock videos. It's kind of hard um, locating ones that actually like match my capstone so that's doing some research right now um I think I want to stop image to pull in before you actually jump into this part of the page and then trying to figure out how I want to lay my about me out and trying to figure out if an about me about myself is really that important in my capstone um so I think I'm just kind of just doing some research and how I actually want it all to kind of work awesome uh roadblocks or concerns um yes i think i do have a roadblock as far as like i want to use a background image and i guess i don't know would it be do i have to like purchase the way i'm finding it is weird like i'm not able to save certain pictures and i don't know I don't want to like have like copywriting issues by doing like if I because I mean I know a way around it I can screenshot a picture from my phone and <laughs> and email it over to myself and use it like that but would I have any like copywriting issues if I did something like that yeah so two things I'm going to send your way um I'm going to post them in the chat uh should have there we go now it's a link um two really helpful um resources Ariel and Latonia already beat me to a third one um okay. one is pixabay.com the other one is pexels.com and then the third is unsplash.com those okay. are good resources for anyone they are free copyright uh they're copyright free images 
um, which is a really important thing to do. And then I know Pixabay, and I'm not sure about the others, have like videos, stock videos that you can use as well. Um, even though um, copyright for a small little side project isn't a huge concern, but still you want to be on the right side of the law because if at any point the copyright owner goes to your website, they can actually send you what is called a cease and desist order, which is saying like, we demand that you stop using our copyrighted content or we are going to sue you basically, which is a really scary letter to get. Um, so definitely uh, worth using one of those three resources for stock images. Um, okay. And then for next steps for you, I would say start thinking about your back end. So um, I noticed a page on there that said like, add your business. Maybe mm -hmm. you want to make it so that the person can fill out a form with like the business information that you would like to collect. And yep. when they click the submit button, maybe the, the business request goes into your database or maybe as a bonus, uh, you try and get it to send an email to yourself that says like, hey, someone submitted this form and here's the information on it. Um, so that's where I would focus on next steps is in yeah. addition to getting the rest of your front end pages done, um, start thinking about the back end and, and what your database needs to do. Okay, that's not, I'll settle one on one up with you to, um, I like the idea of the form in it. I like both ideas. Um, I, if I got it to email to myself, that'd be me actually adding it. But if I let them do it, it would automatically populate and maybe that'll probably be easier. So I guess I'll set a one on one note with you to see it, how we would link it to. Them. Thank you. No problem. Christy, did you want to go next? Yes. Go for it. Um, so, kind of some of the same stuff on the front end. This is my um, the front page. Um, and then this is my front end, my back end. Um, I did create a database. Uh, still working on that. And so right now what I need to do is the ERD so that I can um, figure out what I want in my back end and, um, you know, so, so I'll be able to pull that information. So right, my challenge right now is the ERD. Awesome. And can you give us a quick reminder of what an ERD is and why it's helping you or roadblocking you? Uh, no, I, wait. Uh, Hold on. I wrote it down. Tell me what the synonym stands for. And, oh, wait, wait. Entry, entity, re something diagram. What's entity the, relationship diagram. Let me, write, let me write the whole word out. So entity relationship diagram so the best thing that i the best way that i can describe it here's the database for my capstone here's the database for our portfolio and uh, where is it where is it uh it's not showing up wait when you look at the database for our uh portfolio and the way we wrote it out, um, you know, we had the names, um, the image URLs and all of this stuff. So you have to decide what from these things you want in your database and then how you want to be able to pull stuff. So for our portfolio site, we're using the projects that we created. So that's what we're putting in the database and that's what we're pulling from. But because I'm doing favorite things and I'm going to be pulling from different internet sites to show the things that are my favorites, I have to set up the database so that I will be able to pull in that information um, to show up. Yep. So oh, your right entity here. relationship, right <laughs> your your ERD is is your database design, right? So remember when we got to front end and and uh, we had our HTML and you knew how to make pages and you started working on your capstone. 
And then you were like, oh, how do I do this? What, what, how do I start, right? And we said the right answer is not to start in the code. It's actually to start on paper or a whiteboard or in diagrams.net. Start with your wireframe. Just get the ideas out of your head and onto the paper. And once you do that, then it's so much easier to say, now that I know what it looks like, I can go make it do that. The ERD is the same thing for the database. The database is actually a really intimidating thing. And when you don't know what data you're supposed to store in it, it becomes really hard to get it set up right. So the ERD is the, the planning step before you actually get into the database to identify, hey, I need to store all of this information about my favorite things. And then, oh, there may be some relational data about those favorite things that might be in another table. So I may need to think through that, right? For um, Doug and Larry, I know one thing that they're working on right now is, well, I've got all of these items in the store, but I've got different stores that have those items. So how do I structure that table, that database, in order to store everything properly? So your data may be something really simple. You may only have one table in the database, and that's OK. Um, or you may have a couple tables in the database, but if you are struggling to get your database data modeled and figured out what it should look like, that is a great use of a one-on-one -on -one is to say, hey, I need some help modeling out my database. Can we work on an ERD together? Or can I just talk through my data with you? And we can come up with that data model together. But Christy, it sounds like you're definitely on the right path. Um, if you're finding the ERD is like too much of a challenge, um, feel free to like just jot down notes of what data fields you want and what tables. Um, or if you want to do the full ERD, that is a great thing to show at your capstone um, presentation. Because again, the presentation is all about showing the journey of what you learn throughout your capstone. It isn't just about the final project. So if you've got mock-ups and if you've got ERDs and all of that, make sure you're holding on to them for that final presentation uh, in the middle of September, early September, early September. But okay. sounds like you've got the right next steps. Keep powering through, get working on that ERD, and then you can dive right into your database models. Thank you. Nicole. Okay, so I tried a million times to get minds to show up, but it wouldn't. So I'm just gonna talk it through. Okay. Um, so before I only had my nav bar showing up. So now I finally have like a search on my nav bar. I finally was able to link all of the sections. Like I have about a services. Um, I have like the about the services pages um basically all everything in my nav bar has been linked to each other so now i have blank pages for every single one so now my next thing so my next thing is i'm going to be setting up uh basically i'm going to be mapping out my first page so like my front page and everything i'm going to have some cards on it um, link it to different things and i want to be able to make sure that those are linked and they have their own js's in my code and that they will you know i'll just map out the first page and then yeah that's pretty much what i have i had it all thought out before i forgot all good uh roadblocks or concerns um Right now, I feel like, um, same as Larry, I'm a little strapped for time, but um, I can't wait for like us to be in person so I can get uh, much more help. I'm going to be booking a lot of one-on-ones this week um, and just catching up on assignments, which I've been doing like one a day to make sure that I'm caught up. Awesome. And a reminder, not that you need the reminder, Nicole, but though all of those assignments are created to help you recover these topics, right? So even if you did that homework assignment three weeks ago or three months ago, it doesn't really matter. You may say, all right, I'm struggling on this topic. Maybe I go back and instead of having to watch the three hour class, maybe I go review my homework assignment and remember what I did there because that may help you uh, get something unlocked. Um, Nicole, my advice for you, um, same advice for, for um, 
for a couple other students that they that have presented already is start thinking about your back end while getting the content showing up on your home page is important start thinking about that one piece that you want firing through the database whether that's going to end up being a contact form that sends an email whether that's a uh, a business like a, a request uh, that gets saved in your database for like site updates, whatever one component it is, just being able to say that it's a full stack project and making an API call somewhere is important. Uh, yeah, users logging in is a great example of if you want to add in a login page um, and you want to have the full user authentication flow going on there um, and, and allow people to create an account, that is a great full stack component um, and a good example that, that you understand authentication and authorization. Um, so that um, that would be a, a good uh, next, uh, maybe not a next step, but a second step, right? Of once you get that page done, maybe start thinking through login and getting your backend set up. Awesome. Again, it's not a really hard requirement to have your full stack, uh, your pro your capstone be full stack, but it is certainly a good thing to be able to show to an employer of, hey, I'm not just a front end developer. I don't, I didn't just make this page. Look at all of the stuff that I can do with the the back end and the database and making my own API, so that you can really showcase everything that you've learned throughout the program. Who would like to go next? I'll go. Sure. Uh, so one of the things I needed to get done was to start having data in my database. So I built a little widget where I could um, make like add items and then click on the place in the store where it would be and then oh it's making me a liar well it worked enough for me to get it to to create a a list of items just in an object format which then i used a, a script to take each of those objects make an api call and add them one by one into the database so that I could start working on the, the React front end, which is now making API calls to get, get items from the database. Um, I'm able to cross them off or, and when they get crossed off, they go down the list. Um, I can enable them and disable them. Um, and, and the database knows that so that when I leave and come back, uh, it, the, the states persist. Um, and then, so then the front page here is using that same list from the database and it's saying it had, uh, there are four items are already crossed off. So there are four active items left. And then each, each time you get to an item, you would cross it off, say, I got that. So now it goes to the next item on the list, tells you how many you got found, how many are left, and so on and so forth. And it, then if you go back to your list, you'll see they're all crossed off. So I've got it making calls to the API. And uh, I made a search that can looks for the inventory for the for whichever store you're currently in and it'll it'll match as close as it can based on the inventory and what what words you put in there so if i click on peanut butter and it says peanut butter is already in your shopping list okay so i'm not going to add it um so that that's where i've that's where i'm at right now i'm getting the front end kind of pulled together and as I build it every now and then I realize, oh, I need another API call to handle something else. So I'm kind of piecing it together. 
What and are your next steps? So um, my next steps are there's a big gaping hole right here where the map has to go. So that's definitely right now my biggest challenge is figuring out how to make the how to get the map to show up in here and draw a path based on the items. So that that's my that's my biggest item right now that's left. Um, and this this weekend I got tired of building it, so I, I spent Saturday just working on logos. Love it. Um, one thing to consider is if you're really running into a lot of issues to get your map working, you may want to look at an iframe solution where you could just include a, a link to that. Um, although that opens another can of worms of, well, how do I get data from one of the pages into the iframe itself? Um, so that's one thing to consider in the back of your head of, well, if I already have the map working over here, can I literally just put a frame of the map into the, the um, hole that you have? Um, just something to, to consider there, not necessarily recommending it, but something to have as an emergency in, in your, your back pocket. Okay, as an option. As an option, yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be better if you can get it working inside the hole itself and get it working kind of natively right in that page. Um, but I know how much code you have attached to that. Um, and so the iframe may just be a backup plan for you. Okay, thank you. Any roadblocks or concerns other than getting the map working? Um, I mean, current roadblocks? Yep, anything that you need additional help with? I'm sure I'm going to need help once I start implementing that, or trying to implement uh, the map. Um, one, one thing that I think would have been a big roadblock, but uh, Max, you helped me with it before it became one, was the, the ERD that in writing the API calls, it helped a lot to have a visual map of the different tables to figure out how, what was the call I was trying to make before trying to figure out the SQLize to, to, to do it. Yeah, ERDs are, are a great tool for, um, for not only yourself, but for reference for when other developers join the team or you know, all of the data is in the database, but there is something different about having that visual diagram to reference versus um, having a, um, you know, having to read the code and trying to piece it together. So uh, ERDs are definitely helpful, not only for the initial database planning, but also long term of, of being able to maintain the project and be able to pick it up once you put it down for a little bit. Gotten some positive feedback too in the chat on the the logo designs. Although everyone's a critic, everyone's picked oh. out their favorite so far. Oh, excellent! I'm gonna have to review those. Thank Good. you, everyone. Awesome. So we are two minutes away from break. Let's take a break now. I'm going to throw a list in chat of who still needs to go. Um, and then we will be back at 720. We'll pick up for whoever's left, and then we will dive back into our portfolio full stack code. We'll see you guys at 720. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. So resuming where we left off, um, Corey, Zach, Wayne, Shantina, Danielle, and Shranjay, you are left to do your capstone updates. Um, sharing your screen is optional, but it is just a matter of what did you get done since your last capstone update? What are you working on in the next two weeks? And do you have any roadblocks or concerns? Um, this, this is me. I just wanted to say that well for my update i don't have much of an update i'm we moved last week and we were just now able to stay in our home for like the last two days because it wasn't ready and i was kind of going in between my parents houses so i do apologize i don't have um much of an update right now um the only roadblock i have is more just of the personal uh roadblock of 
making sure I create that space and time instead of, you know, to work on this instead of focusing on the boxes at my house. But that that's me. I'm sorry. No, totally get it. And, it's, and it can be a lot to juggle, but, um, you know, set set objectives for yourself and say like, all right, goal today is three boxes and three pages on my capstone or three components or just getting the routing done, right? Because sometimes um, managing your time can be hard. So if you think about it more of managing your tasks and saying, let me just set one goal for today, even if it's only 15 minutes of working on my project, I'm just going to do 15 minutes and just get my nav bar working or right. just get my back end set up or whatever it is. Um, sometimes that, that can be an easier way to um, to get to feel accomplished and feel like you're still spending time on it while still, you know, having time constraints going on. So um, that would just be one one piece of advice for you is sometimes um, when time management is tricky, think of it more as um, tasks and objectives. Um, and if you set a small enough one, um, sometimes that's an easier way to find that you're making progress on it. Okay. And by the end of this week, I am going to set up an, a one-on-one -on -one with you for direction. Awesome. Make sure I'm moving in the right direction. Thank you. Who would like to go next? Hey. Uh, hey guys so from last week i've just been um i'm not gonna share basically sorry but um from last week i've just been working on the individual pages um i didn't get to do anything over the weekend specifically because i have my son is crazy but um i do have a a deadline for myself no for myself this this wednesday um i should have a lot more done and in terms of roadblocks i still need the user interface set up properly and, and to get like being able to create and log in with with the user and all of that part so that's where i'm really heading towards but besides constructing how the page is going to look awesome i would say make sure that you've got a prioritized list wayne because it can feel kind of overwhelming to have all the different things you need to work on um but if you say uh, set a goal like that login right um break that login down to multiple steps of saying okay i need my back end set up i need my sqlize connected i need a user's model and i need to create the login endpoint then I need to create the login page, and then I need to do the backend integration to the login page, right? Breaking that one step of, well, login needs to work down into those six individual items will make it much easier to not only get the whole thing done, but to feel like you're making progress on something that is a really big task. So while I think setting a deadline for Wednesday is great, make sure that you have um, attached goals to that deadline, right? So it's not just a, oh, I need to make progress by Wednesday. It is, I need to get these specific things done by yeah. Wednesday. And that will definitely help make you feel that deadline, uh, make it feel even more uh, accomplished uh, because you can actually rattle off what you got done. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Who would like to go nice next? Excuse me. Um, I can go. Sure. Okay. So, um, since the last time, I have um added in a login page, and so I'm trying to see if I can find it. There's a login page for my form. Um. I've been also testing out my APIs um, through uh, Postman. My roadblock is that recently on uh, Syracuse data, the API changed and now it's a download and I don't know what to do with that. Okay, um, I would recommend that you reach out to Jason Scharf um, because this is kind of his, uh, this is what he does for his full-time job. He may be able to help you um, 
either get to the API the way it was working before or explain how to use the download format instead of what it was. All right. And that's pretty much it. Um, oh, what do I plan to do going forward is exactly what you said. Um, I'm going to work on uh, figuring out how to integrate the download format and rather than making the API call. Awesome. And then for your form, have you done the back end steps to make the login yeah. work? Um, no, I have to work on that as well. That's on my, that's on my to do list. Awesome. Yeah. And that will be a great um, example of your full stack code. Um, so I would definitely shoot to do that next. All right. Thank you. Good work. Uh, Zach or Shranjay? Uh, I can go next. Okay. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make as much uh, progress as I wanted to because I got stuck. I got kind of confused. I thought the um, password reset and the, um, uh, what's it called? Um, like, creating an account would be easier. I kind of underestimated that. I got confused and kind of stalled out on that. Um, so I just stylized. Um, I fixed some of the stylization on my page because um, I had to create a separate function for one of my buttons because uh, the way I had it set up in the code was set up a little differently when I tried to um, uh, make them all the same, like it made my whole page disappear for some reason. Um, so I just fixed that so that uh, the buttons all look the same, but um, I did schedule a one on one so that I can uh, get past those two pages and then I have to work on the um, uh, actual API. Um, as well as importing the um, uh, links to different uh, streaming services and also um, putting the individual. I was talking to Jason about putting the links at the bottom of the page and then having them appear on the page with the search results, but I definitely have to look into more on APIs in general. Okay. Roadblocks or concerns? Um, like I said, the, um, uh, submitting a, um, email to recover passwords and creating a new password, um, I have to look into that, um, cause I'm not sure what has to go in the front end and what has to go in the back end. Um, and then, uh, I was talking to Jason about like trying to, either have links to streaming services show up in response to the searches or having them have like a hover effect. Um, if there is a result for it in the API, but I think Jason was saying that's a little ambitious and I should probably go for, um, uh, what is it called? Um, the minimal functionality, um, getting that under control first before I, try doing something that's more complicated so cool um i would give, just give you the advice of be careful um i think create an account can be in scope for mvp forgot password gets a little bit more complicated because you need to basically generate a token and send an email um both of which are not the easiest things to do um, and it is the whole full stack front end, back end, and email that you need to generate um, for forgot password. So my personal advice would be uh, maybe put uh, forgot password as like a goal for a, a stretch goal. So like, hey, once I get MVP all working, maybe forgot a password is the first function um, that I want to build and, and get working. Um, I think creating an account is definitely something that is worthwhile. Um, and something we can definitely work on in a one-on-one. -on -one. 
And then my other advice would be um, try and get to that API of actually pulling the data in and getting it to show up on a page. Um, it doesn't matter how ugly it is. Once the data is actually there and it's functional, it becomes a lot easier to style all of that. So that would be my advice is push off forgot password. Uh, we can work on getting create account working. Um, and then focus on really getting that API working, making the call, getting the data to show up and all of that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. Um, Shranjay or Corey, I think you are the two left. Oh uh, yeah, I'll go, that's fine. Uh... Sure. So like on the technical side, it's, it's basically the same. I still got to, uh, kind of like you mentioned before, I got to do a login. Uh, so I got to do some back end. I got to create some stuff for that. I also wanted to set up like a page for a cart. Now, because like uh, the, the original idea I was going with, which was like just a passion project skate shop, uh, it was kind of like limiting in like what I can do. So after like talking to Jason and stuff, he has suggested that I, uh, just reach out to like a shop and see if I can rebuild the site, get some of the pictures and really do like an actual e-commerce website. And so uh, I'm in the uh, process of doing that right now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, other than the direction changing, I just have to really do a lot of the stuff for the back end, uh, creating like a login, uh, you know, page and all that for like the account and a couple of other things. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Cool. So I would say really focus on getting that login page working, um, which is going to be, let's get your React app created. Let's get the backend created. Let's get it connected to SQLize and let's model everything off of that login page that we already have working. Right. Um, I think that that's going to be really important to, to get a good project foundation. Um, so that when you're ready to hit the ground running and get all of the products loaded up and the pages created, um, you'll have the right foundations in place. So I would say really focus on getting the, the front end and back end projects set up um, and getting login working, because once you get that done, it's going to be much easier to add um, additional things on top of it. But don't let the hearing back from the store hold you up from getting the, the project foundations done. Okay. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. Sean J. Sorry, I'm just taking notes on everyone. Sean J, are you available to do a, a capstone update? Not no big deal. Okay. Thank you everyone for the updates. Um, whoever didn't go today, if you would prefer to go to, oh, did I miss anyone? I think I have everyone. Uh, okay. Um, thank you everyone for the updates. Let's do a group check-in, group thoughts. How are we feeling about Capstone? What are we panicking about? How are we feeling in general now that another two weeks has gone by? We're in that home stretch, right? Right around a month left. So we really should be thinking about MVP at this point. We should really be thinking about what backend steps do I have left to integrate with? Um, you don't need a login page, you don't really need a back end, but thinking through those little pieces and seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how far away that light is, will make it much easier to get to it, right? So thinking through your next steps, taking a step back from your code and looking at this as a project manager. What is left for me to do? Even if that is uh, a really long list, even if you don't know how to do all the steps on the list, just having the list gives you the roadmap, right? Having Seeing that light at the end of the tunnel is what helps you get there. Um, 
A little worried, proud of making it this far, absolutely. You guys are all on track. You all have something that you can present at your graduation, right? So thinking about this and taking a step back when you panic and say, look at how far I've come. Yeah, the light at the end of the tunnel is a good goal to shoot for, but sometimes it, it's helpful to turn around and see how far you've come, right? At the entry of the tunnel, realize that you've made it this far and all of the concepts that you've learned. Also keep in mind, one-on-ones are totally open and available to you guys. And if you go on and there are not one-on-ones that you can make uh, fit into your schedule, just shoot me a Slack message and let me know what times are good for you. Chances are I can fit you in either after class or at another time slot, even if it's not open up on Calendly. Um, so one-on-ones certainly available to you guys. When you come into your one-on-ones, have your goals in mind. Um, almost all of you are, are great at doing that, right? Show up with your list of questions, have your code ready, tell me where you're stuck and what you're trying to get done, and we'll bang through that. Also, don't be afraid to schedule a, a 15 minute or a 30 minute one on one, um, because if you do that, that means that you can always schedule another one later on the week. So sometimes it's easier to do three 15 minute one on ones than it is to do one big 60 minute one on one and realize that, you know, by the end of it, everything is, you know, 30 minutes into it, you have everything working. So um, another thing to, to keep in mind there. Has Laura talked to you about mock interviews and signing up? I have a question. Yes, she has. She put it in the, in the she's been talking about it for a little while, but then she also put it in the group chat um, recently, like today, actually. But I didn't want to say is I'm kind of telling myself here, but I haven't really did a lot for Laura. Laura. How concerned should I be <laughs> when it comes to mock interviews? So you don't need to be super worried about it. Everyone interviewing, it is a mock interview, right? So when you interview with someone there, it is not going to impact, you know, the actual chances of getting a job. The whole point of the mock interview is that it is mock and that you, you get practice in that interview. Um, with that said, everyone who signs up for interviews um, has some connection with Hack Upstate. They're someone that we've either worked with in the past or as part of the community. Um, so don't panic there, but at the same time, if you're behind on Laura's assignments, all of Laura's assignments are getting you career ready and job ready. So while the technical skills are certainly part of the, the program, there's a reason why it is called careers in code and not just learn to code, right? Um, Laura is setting up the career part of your, your, um, of your, uh, of, of our um, curriculum here, right? So doing Laura's assignments are just as important as uh, doing the coding assignments and working on your capstone. So I know it's a lot to juggle, but you may get to the end of the program and realize that because you didn't work on all of Laura's stuff, you're not prepared in your mock interviews, or there are some things on your resume that you really should have thought through and worked with on Laura uh, for, or you're reading job descriptions and, and you really wish you, know, you had done that assignment or whatever it is. So um, I would say keep, um, definitely bookmark the Sign Up Genius link I will post it in the chat, but it is also in the um, in the career coaching channel. Um, the Sign Up Genius page looks like this, um, and if you scroll down, you'll see that we already have people signed up for Wednesday. So whenever you see an interviewer in the slot, you can sign up as a student. The Zoom link, I believe, is a little different than the Zoom link we use for class. Um, so just keep that in mind. Make sure you add this and add this time to your calendar. Um, the, um, the, it's not like Calendly where you'll get an email and it will automatically add it to your calendar. So make sure that when you sign up for a slot, one, that there is an interviewer already in that slot. Um, and then two, make sure that you add this Zoom link and the time and date to your calendar. 
Um, Sean has already signed up. Sean did interviews in cohort um, two and was a, a awesome mock interviewer. Um, and then you'll also see I have some slots in here. And when I interview you guys, it will not be as dean of students and lead instructor and all the stuff that you guys know me as now. Uh, it will be as, hey, I'm CTO over at Tuzag. So I'm going to give you the same interview that I give anyone that I hire for a full stack role at my company. Um, so I do have some slots in here already. It is all first come, first serve. So you guys can already come in here and sign up. We will be reaching out to uh, more employers and getting them to sign up for more slots. But be prepared for a two-part interview. The first part of the interview is going to be all um, what we call a behavior interview or a screener interview, right? So those are all the questions that, that you love to hate in, a, in an interview. Tell me about a time when you had to use problem solving to accomplish a goal. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses, right? All of those common interview questions. Then the second half of the interview is going to be more technically focused, right? It's going to say... What's the most basic element in React? How do you pass data from a parent to a child in React? Um, it could be something like, what is a tool that you use in the database to make it easier to interact with in your code? It could be something like, what's a full stack architecture and what are the pieces of a stack, right? Those kinds of, of questions of, all right, how, how do I take this knowledge and apply it? And some of it is going to be, oh, well, I think the answer is a component, but because we did everything project-based, let me think about what are, what are the elements? What, how did we build and react, right? And sometimes just talking through that question um, for the interviewer, the interviewer may give you some hints and may guide you on that. But um, we have heard feedback. I know uh, Latonia just came in and presented and said how important the mock interviews were uh, for her. We have gotten really, really good feedback on mock interviewers, um, both from the interviewer and as the uh, interviewee. So I highly recommend that you take advantage of those mock interviews. The other advice that I will give you is that you are guaranteed to just wipe out completely on your first interview. Not guaranteed, but that is why you do mock interviews. So you get an idea of the questions that they're asking. You get the practice because when you have a bad interview, you want that bad interview to be with someone who is friendly with Hack Upstate and is doing this just so you get the practice, right? Um, and I tell my friends that all the time who are interviewing either even in their, their current career of get out and interview. It is not the end of the world if you bomb an interview. The only way you're going to get better at interviewing is practicing it and doing it. And so what if it didn't work out with that company? Now you've got more practice on the questions and, and you can always follow up with the person. If you do a real interview and you don't get the position, I encourage everyone to email back the recruiter or the head of HR or whoever's managing the hiring process and say, hey, I understand, wasn't the right fit for the job. Could you give me some more details as to why I wasn't a fit or, or is there anything that I can improve on so that down the road, I might be a better hire for your company? Now, chances are you're actually probably never gonna work there, but if you frame it in a way of you saying, hey, I would really like to better myself to potentially be able to work for you in the future. You've now opened the door for that recruiter to provide you feedback because oftentimes you don't know why you aren't doing well in an interview. So it never hurts to ask that. Um, and to Latonia's point, as soon as you get out of the email, shoot them a, and uh, I'm sorry, as soon as you get out of the interview, shoot them an email. Say, hey, thank you for your time today. Really appreciated uh, mock interviewing and have some personal connection to them. Say, uh, you know, I really appreciate you asking me about uh, database tools and I'll make sure to look into that so I'm more prepared for that question in the future. Or say, it was great chatting to you today. I learned so much about your company at Tuzag. I think it would be a great place to work. Um, hopefully we can stay in touch, right? Because these interviews are not just about the 30 minutes. 
It's about the prep that you do before the interview of research what company they work at. Don't show up to an interview and say, I want to work at your company and then not have any idea what their company does. Go on their website, do a little research, go on to LinkedIn, right? Even if you just know the basics of what they do, that's important. And that's something that I start every interview out with as an interviewer. I ask, what do you know about our company? It's super open-ended, but I want to know that you've done the research. Because if you show up to an interview and say, I want to work for you, and then you have no idea what they do, even if it's a mock interview, why would I want to hire you to work with us when you don't even know what they do, what we do? So keep that in the back of your mind of when you sign up for a slot, look at their company name, look into what their website is or what their LinkedIn looks like, do a little homework and always have questions prepared. This is not just show up and answer questions. You should always have questions for the interviewer. What, what's it like working at your company? What's a typical nine to five day look like for someone in this role? What's your favorite part about working at the company? What's one thing you wish you could change about the company? What does my team look like? Who would I be working with? Um, I mean, you can go on and on. Oh, I noticed on your website, it says that you do this specific thing. What's the most interesting part about working with that challenge? Whatever it is, have questions prepared because the interviewer should be prepared to answer questions as many as they are asking. That was a very long ramble. And I'm sorry, Nicole, that that was targeted at you. It was advice for, for everyone, but hopefully I answered the, the original question. Larry, go ahead. So I looked at the time and days and I won't be able to make it to any of those because I'm working Monday through Friday, basically nine to five and then coming right home to get into class. Um, I would reach out to Laura. Um, I can definitely, if you just schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me, Larry, instead of signing up on through Sign Up Genius, um, I can definitely do uh, an interview with you. Um, and I can even do two interviews. I can do 30 minutes of just like the behavioral screener practice. And then we can do a second 30 minute interview, which is more focused on like the tech questions and being prepared to answer those. Um, so feel free to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me if um, you can't make those times. But there are, I think I looked at the spreadsheet, there are um it, none, they were all like monday tuesday wednesday thursday and the last up to like 5 15 so from 4 45 to like 5 15 was the last one so yeah and if um if anyone else is in that situation feel free to just schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me instead on my normal calendly link um and then put in the notes when you book it like mock interview um, and I, I'll definitely, uh, I have no problem doing mock interviews outside of those times, but we do have, I think, 10 different employers signed up um, for mock interviews um, and taking advantage of the Hack Up State Network is certainly beneficial if you can make it work in that time. Totally understand if you can't, um, but still shoot Laura a message and say like, hey, sorry, I'm in the apprenticeship or I work during those times. Um, just wanted to give you a heads up that that I can't make them, but we'll schedule a mock interview with Max. Thank you. Any other questions about mock interviews? Okay. I know we only have 30 minutes of class left. Any final comments on Capstone, any roadblocks, any topics for the rest of the week that you would like to see covered? Um, I have like a, maybe a suggestion for how you guys possibly run like next cohort as far as careers, is, like the career portion is concerned. So I guess like that last week where we don't really have like a actual schedule anything like scheduled in there maybe you guys can move it to then because just kind of navigating through I'm not sure if anybody else feel this way but for me personally like working 
actually in, attending class and, you know, trying to do the work and keeping up with that. The career portion of it is like overwhelming in a sense. Um, like, so if y'all can like, like a week where there's like actually just, or not even at the end, but just a week for just Laura, I think it would be a lot more helpful. Um, just trying to not like juggle all of those things at the same time has been a little difficult. I appreciate that feedback. And that's one thing we ran into in the second cohort was that we spread the career portion out throughout the whole program instead of kind of doing it on a delayed start. And some of the feedback that we got there was like, I'm literally learning HTML in the second week. And you're asking me to do like career work. I'm nowhere ready to start a career in this. And yet I have to do career work, right? Like that felt a little off. Um, so what we did is we tried to kind of push the schedule back a little bit on a little bit of a delay um, and try to do it asynchronously. But um, I definitely think there is a lot uh, to be said about, hey, can we rearrange the, the schedule a little bit and just have Laura teach for the full week um, and kind of do the homework, maybe either in class or part of that? A, a, a suggestion would be like maybe a day within one of the weeks like she could just you know it, that would make more sense like you have Monday Tuesday Wednesday and should have a Thursday and then maybe your next two three weeks after that yeah let me just throw a quick poll together um or optional on Fridays if you want to go if you don't I, I feel like if it's within the class time it's something that we'll actually do but if it's like more optional it's more like uh you know what I mean like but this is more important so we'll push and make the time for it versus if it's within the schedule yeah I do like that suggestion way but I, but I understand for it being optional, but I still think maybe she should be on like Fridays going forward because, you know, we're already here all the week. You might as well put in that extra time for Laura at the end of the week. And then you have the weekends to try to complete homework or work on resumes. Like, and then we can I, get I don't, something for, I don't know. The, for the, for our actual homework. And then also something for Laura. Now, Fridays, when we were supposed to be doing office hours, we couldn't all get here on Friday. So, But one thing I was going to say is that um, I just think core, a better coordination, because at one point when she wanted us to do resumes and cover letters, we were learning JavaScript and everybody was pulling their hair out. And we said to her, like, you know, this is just not a good time because of what we have going on um, in the other aspects. So maybe if she got your schedule of what you were teaching and then she could um, kind of line it up or like we said, maybe on a Wednesday or another day during the week. Um, I, the I only like pushback she... I have on that is that I think there are very few topics in the boot camp that are not overwhelming and hard to learn. Right. And so so what I'm it would is at the time when she wanted she had assignments and you had assignments and we were trying to learn stuff so like I think Wayne said we weren't like our mind was like okay we got to do this because if we don't learn this the resume and the cover letter aren't going to matter you know like if we don't get this part so I was just saying maybe I don't know um some like a little bit better would you say asynchronous or like a little bit better coordination so that she knows what we have going on and she's not just putting things out there at a time when we're having something going on that's kind of overwhelming for us or that we need to spend a lot of extra time um, with learning. So I think the reason why I said like added to the end, like where she, or in at some point where she just get a full week to herself. The reason why I said that is because I feel like, um, in regards to like Nicole saying like we knew what we were you know signing up for before we got into the cohort like yeah that sound nice um in retrospect but then when you start like adding those things into your like everyday life like the optional thing is like okay well if I have the option to go to something I'm gonna opt probably not to do it um versus it actually being built into it um I think you know that'd be a bit more helpful and then also I feel like with the career thing 
in how it was ran in the first one, they actually had her like present more so with us. We have like videos from last cohort. And I feel like that was kind of frustrating as well too, because you had all the people from last cohort chiming in on what they had going on versus like with us, we kind of all like know each other. We know we kind of like, you know, more so ourselves versus listening to her talk to somebody else. Like we have our own questions and things. So I think her actually having that time for her actual self to spend time with us would be a little bit more helpful. That why I suggested like the weekend at some okay. point. Okay. Danielle, did her, you have something to add? Um yes. Uh I liked Scotty's uh suggestion. I saw um the uh, her as like an opportunity to sort of segue us into the workforce. So I would love for her to be sort of at the end of the program to prepare us for the workforce. Um, rather than throughout the program. So I just wanted to give like a little bit of feedback on maybe that's another way that she could be incorporated like as a segue into the workforce and like a resource to rely on even after the boot camp as you're searching for jobs. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna take all of this. I have a weekly standing meeting with Jesse. Um, so I'm gonna take all of this to him. Um, while we're talking about it, I'm going to launch a poll on this, um, just so we have some metrics on where students are at and which, which they, um, would prefer. Um, one is basically every couple weeks, like every couple Thursdays, we would have a career coaching lesson, uh, instead of class, it would be at the same time. Um, another option is, hey, let's just dedicate an entire week. Um, at the end of the program, we'll spend all 12 hours of class time that week on the career stuff. Um, and then the other option is like, hey, because we don't have class on Fridays, does it make more sense, you know, 5.30 to 6.30 on Fridays or sometime maybe Friday mornings um, to do career stuff? And we would be able to set that time early on at the program. Um, so, it, you know, it would be an, an expectation before, before you signed up. Is there a way to do the poll? And I don't mean to say redo the poll, but is there a way to do the poll where we can number it like one, two, three? What do you mean? Is oh, there, uh, oh, like rank order it? Yeah. I don't think so in Zoom. I would have okay. to like make a Google form for that. Um, and okay. that is something that we could do with Jesse is like, there was a pretty, pretty big feedback form that we asked you guys to fill out um, right after graduation. Um, and mm -hmm. we will probably end up having a um, like a career coaching section on that where we could put these options in as a rank order. OK. All right. Because I, I do think a couple of these are great ideas. So, OK, thank you. Yeah. And, and one thing I will say, as we are nearing the end of the program, think about what was frustrating for you. Think about what worked well for you. Think about what you wish you knew at the beginning of the program and just start a Google Doc with that or put it into your notes or whatever it is, because like we are all about taking the feedback from you guys and making it better for the next cohort. Um, so we have that feedback form. It is, you can uh, make it anonymous optionally. So if you're willing <laughs> for us to reach back out to you and, and like kind of talk through your feedback, um, you can put your email on that and your name on it, but we do have that form be totally um, optionally anonymous, um, and that will range everything from like my teaching and lessons that went well for you, modules that worked, modules that didn't work. You can say, oh my God, I absolutely hated Max teaching, and I was so happy when another guest instructor came in. Whatever it is, when you start having that feedback, just dump it into a note somewhere, whether it's a Google Doc or an email draft that you write to yourself or you even just scribble it down on paper because we will have that feedback form coming um, at the end of class, probably right after graduation. Okay, 11 votes in and someone signed in twice. No, okay. Um, Thank you guys for that. Um, I'm going to end the poll. Um, I don't think there's any harm in sharing this with you guys. So um, it does seem like people were leaning towards the uh, uh, career class every couple of weeks. 
Um, but that's definitely something that we will keep in mind. And I will run by Jesse um, for the uh, on, on our Thursday meeting uh, just to discuss that. So thank you for your feedback on that. And basically, you could kind of rank it. Uh, the one was, you know, first place. The other one was second. The other one was third. So still kind of like a ranking. Yes. Yeah. True. I Any other? <laughs> what, Nicole? So I accidentally didn't vote for mine. <laughs> um. Any other questions or feedback on the program? Yes, sorry. I, <laughs> it's me again. It's like, um, I think if there was possible, because I know like you guys are like incorporated with like it's upstate. Um, if you guys, I know I I took a, a lot of programs. So when I did my medical office assistant program, it was a 12 week, I mean a 12 month program, but what they did offer at the end, it was, wasn't even offered. It was mandatory in order for us to graduate was a externship and the externship ran about, I believe it was five weeks long where they had different, you know, um, doctor's offices and that was prominent in the area that, you know, agreed to take us on. It was unpaid. Um, it was the credit, it was a three point credit that we that went towards the program. But I think that would be something that would be helpful as well too. Um, just because like just that uncomfortable feeling of okay, I learned this hand, like, you know, the book side of it, but actually being somewhere hands-on, like, okay, well, this is what your day-to-day -day life will look like if you, you know, once you get into the field and then it also opened up opportunity, like, hey my our students is working for free for you guys for this five weeks you do have the option if you absolutely love them to get hired on so many of my classmates actually got hired from their um externships I personally didn't get hired from my externship they didn't have a budget for me but to be able to put that on my resume to say hey I did an externship for this I got a lot of um opportunities once it was done with and was able to like have options to pick where I actually wanted to work for once it was over because of that yeah unfortunately externships or internships are kind of rare to be that short in the technology industry especially in software engineering um because I I know as someone who just hired uh actually a career uh a cohort one graduate from careers in code it has taken them five months uh, I'm sorry five weeks just to get comfortable in our code Right. It took them five weeks to adjust to um, using the programming languages that we use, exploring the code, knowing the different pieces of it. Like all of that takes five weeks on its own. So we had a full like five weeks, even if it was unpaid of um, which it, it isn't. But um, if it were, uh, it, it just takes like that long to get up to speed. Um, and so that's the only thing where like. I haven't ever really seen that in, in industry and not just in Syracuse, but also like Silicon Valley. And um, I have a couple of engineers that, that uh, friends that are engineers that work at different companies. And like that short of a program doesn't really exist um, because it just takes so long to like onboard at a company and get familiar with the code um, and battle the imposter syndrome that you go through for all of that. Um, with that said, um, we are partnering um, with uh, Center State. Uh, we're all kind of we're we're working on formalizing these ties right now, but um, being better integrated into Erie Twenty One, which is a Lemoyne program, and Lock Four, which is like the non-traditional students, um, integrating a little more tightly with um, the career services there, job fairs at Lemoyne. Um, and also the uh, surge apprenticeship uh, that's just getting off the ground right now. I know a couple of you have made it into that program, um, but we are working on getting the timing to align right there so that when uh, you do get ex um, accepted into that apprenticeship program and you do start interviewing, that there isn't the same overlap of, oh, I have to finish class and also like be attending this pre-apprenticeship. Um, so we do have some things on the horizon in terms of having more resources for you um, once the program ends um, or towards the end of the program in terms of career services, job fairs, um, and integration into the apprenticeship program. That's cool. Like, now that you say it like that, it does make sense, like, going into something and actually getting your feet wet in it. So it do make sense now that you say it, but I'm excited about what's to come. 
Awesome. And I will say one thing that I know Free Code Camp pushes a lot um, is get involved in an open source project because open source projects are oftentimes volunteer uh, maintenance. Um, and I know Free Code Camp themselves has a great community because they are open source. Um, but finding a project that you actually care about that is an open source project and like messaging the maintainer of the project and saying like, hey, I'm a new coding grad. Um, I have experience in full stack web development. Is there a feature that I could work on that would help help this project? Um, and that can be a great thing to add to your resume of, hey, I contributed code to this project that was peer reviewed by other developers and now is actually being used in the real world. Um, and there are all kinds of open source projects out there. So that can be another thing to look into after the program of, hey, while well, I'm still you know, searching for my, my job and uh, doing all of the legwork on, on the career work, um, maybe I start working with this open source project and can add that to my resume as well. Larry, go ahead. I was gonna mention, see if you can connect with like unemployment so that they're, um, so I forgot what it's called, I think it's a 599. So while you're in the boot camp, you are exempt from having to go through all that job stuff that they want you to do. Because to me, this was more important. And I kind of told the lady, like, I'm not gonna quit the boot camp, but they still expect us, you know, to do all this job search stuff while, you know, we're going through it. I think they just so happened to be so busy that they didn't have time to like double back and bother us, but that was an issue we ran across. I think Jesse took care of that. I think that's taken care of because I I work I was working with him because I got denied for the five ninety nine, and um, he said he was um taking care of that to okay. get to fill out the paperwork to get it approved. So okay. because it's not recognized through New York State as an education program. And so once they recognize it as an education program, when someone applies, then it, it will automatically, you know what I'm saying? They, they would have their information. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I know that that was mentioned early on in the program, but I can definitely follow up with Jesse on that. Um, we are not accredited as a college, but that doesn't mean that we don't qualify for, you know, we are an educator um, and, heck the the next cohort is all state funded right so um it's all all grant funded so um that's definitely something that i can follow up with jesse on um and something that we should also probably include in like a student handbook or in one of the documents of hey by the way if you happen to be unemployed know that we're registered 599 and i don't know the details of it but um that's definitely something i can follow up with jesse on and make sure um is documented in, in one of our uh, one of the things that you read before you get started. Absolutely, I'm so happy that Larry said that because that was something that I ran into as well too. It was it kind of forced me to go back into the workforce. Um, when I first started, I wasn't working, but because I ran into that and got denied as well, I was like, well, sound you know, I have to go back to work because I'm not gonna quit this to you know, to be in compliance with unemployment. But I think it when you do add it in the handbook, um, just put a note in there, like you have to do it within like your first 13 weeks of being in, on unemployment. And that could be possibly why it was denied as well too. Um, but yeah, it's a little caveat. That's that's good to know. Um, yeah, I will make sure that all of that information gets over to Jesse and that we uh, incorporate that into cohort four. But the fact that it's 12 hours, you know, that we, we work, we were in class for 12 hours makes it eligible. So, whoever, you know, whoever, um, they, that's one of the things that they bring up is the amount of time. So the 12 hours um, is the exact amount of time. So it, make, it works for part of their requirements. It's just that it needs to be registered with the state. Yeah, and, and, and like I said... Jesse may have already have done that, or he may have done like a one-off letter, Christy, to make sure that like you had the documentation, but we may be pending in the full registration, or I'm not sure what the details of that are. Um, so I will ask him just so just so I'm more informed and also to make sure that it doesn't fall off a radar. Yeah, he told me that um it would be taken care of. He just said that it wouldn't be taken care of by the time I would be eligible to um we had a back a back and forth um 
and and you know what I was thinking about because that the the where we filled out the papers to get the computers is through Department of Labor, so it would make sense that it will all be connected because it isn't. Through... <laughs> it should be. It's all the same. So the New York State thing, is department. Extra special. New York State is special. Uh, I just filed a new LLC. And New York, I believe, is the only state left in the country that when you form a new LLC business, you need to publish in two different um, newspapers, actual physical printed newspapers that you formed a new company. And it is literally the last state in the country that I know of that has this requirement. Well, anyway, I did the whole requirement. I filed it on, I formed the company January 1st. I it takes six weeks to run the ads in the paper. I filed the paperwork February 9th, and I got back the confirmation literally last week that they processed the publication requirement. So it took them five months to go through their own stupid requirement just to say, oh, yeah, we, we actually, you know, satisfied the requirement. So um, all kinds of inefficiencies there that um, exist, but uh, definitely an, an important thing to know, and obviously not a um, not a uncommon thing for someone to be on unemployment and also going through our program. So um, that is something that I will follow up with him on. Um, and then another thing I know um, that came up at, at some point was, hey, um, I knew class was going to be 12 hours a week, but I was just not prepared for all the extra work that it would take for the boot camp, right? And so I just wanted to let you guys know, I'm going to read you the, the script that I read. Take that off, Larry. You're not graduating yet. Uh, the uh, We have uh, added this in literally into the interview process before you even get accepted, is we say, while class time is only 12 hours a week, most students find themselves spending at least 20 hours a week between class homework comprehension, study groups, additional resources, capstone project, etc. There's a reason we call it a boot camp. This is not a traditional class. The more time you put into the, the program, the more you'll get out of it, and the sooner you'll be able to launch your career. So that is the a precursor that we put into the interview process now to make sure, hey, when you sign up for this, don't think you're just signing up for, you know, a couple credit college class. Be prepared that you've got to invest the time into it. Any other feedback? And we'll be sending those forms around at the end of the, the cohort. Um, and they have the option to be filled out anonymously. Um, and we may have some questions on that that may spark ideas as well. Um, and then we will have a note section at the end. Do not feel constrained, <laughs> constrained by that form. If you have some thoughts that you want to share about anything at any point, like I said, go go start a note, keep it uh, keep it yourself, um, and then when that form comes around, there will certainly be a section where you can like literally just copy and paste everything in, whether it's bullet form or paragraph or uh, heck, you could record a video and upload it if you wanted to. However, you want to express uh, express yourselves there. With all of that said, with all eleven minutes, let's go dive into a super complicated coding. No, I'm just kidding. We will get back to the portfolio project tomorrow. Uh, we are going to get our, uh, we have our database structure done. So tomorrow we will dive into actually getting our projects added to the database, actually get that showing up on our homepage, getting our routing working for the individual project pages and creating a component for that. So that is where we are headed tomorrow. Um, on Thursday, uh, Jesse actually had a topic suggestion for um, technical interviews, practicing with rapid fire questions, leak code, triple byte, and uh, generic take home projects. So we are going to spend some time on Thursday uh, practicing for uh, technical interviews, uh, also sometimes called whiteboarding interviews, understanding what um, an employer can expect from you, um, what kind of tests you would get, what a whiteboarding interview looks like, 
So we're going to be diving into all of that on Thursday. Um, on Wednesday, um, there was something that I just thought of and it flew into my brain and out of my brain. That, oh, uh, just generic concepts of interview questions to prepare for. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to fit all of that into Wednesday or Thursday. But anyway, tomorrow we are wrapping up portfolio full stack. Wednesday, we are going into generic interview questions that you can prep for, uh, general terms that you should know, some concepts that didn't really fit into any other classes, but we should cover so that when you are asked about them, you know what they are. Um, and then Thursday, we will get into practice technical interviews uh, and going from there. Larry, go ahead. Uh, one thing I would like revisit it is the ERD. Okay. That was it. Is that a cat? He disappeared. Yeah. The vanishing cat. Mm, good one. <laughs> he has the invisibility cloak. One of the most useful skills you can develop as a programmer is <laughs> taking good notes. Um, and that is one thing that I have learned by requirement um, is taking good notes. Um, Okay, anything else before I let you guys go? Larry, I'm going to slot that ERD review in for Wednesday, but we'll see whenever we get to it, we can recover that. No problem. Thank you. Any other questions? Stay cool, Stay cool and hydrated. Did we all get our uh, things in? I'm sorry. This is so hot. Oh, Jesus for the computers, Christ. for the laptops. Oh, everyone has submitted the forms, and I will have an update for you on probably Thursday. Um, I believe Jesse followed up with the um, with our contact there, and now we're just waiting to hear back from them. But I have individually confirmed with every student that they did submit the form. Um, so now it's just a matter of hearing back from them. I cannot promise you that we will have an answer by Thursday, but we will have an update for you uh, by the end of the week. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Important, important lesson to read all the directions. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> good night. Have an awesome night, everyone. Night. Have a good night, y'all.